Hello everyone, welcome back. The most awaited topic of this chapter, the Entity Relationship Diagram, which is also called as simply ER Diagram. Let's step into the topics of the day. What we are going to learn in this presentation, we are going to understand the Entity Relationship Diagram, which is the ER Diagram. And also we are going to understand this ER Diagram with the help of the basic structure and components of the ER model. Why waiting? Let's step into the topic of the day, the ER diagram. As I mentioned, ER diagram means it is the entity relationship diagram. We know what is an entity and we know how relationship is also formed among entities. So this diagram is going to basically involve the entities and the relationship among the entities. And we also have seen the basic components of the ER model, which are the entity sets, the attributes and the relationship sets. Let's start with the basics of this ER diagram now. Basically, this ER diagram is used to express the overall logical structure of a database. We have already seen about the ER model, which is mainly used for expressing the overall logical structure of a database. And we know ER model is a high level data model. And basically, this ER diagram is a graphical representation. So it is depicted or portrayed as diagrams. So ER model, when it is portrayed as diagrams, they are represented as ER diagrams. And that is why it is mentioned that this is a graphical representation. And as I mentioned, a picture is a worth of thousand words. So it's easy to understand things with the picture. And that too, when it involves a lot of complexities, instead of having a written or a verbal communication, if things are represented with the help of diagrams, it has more advantages. And hence, these are simple and clear. While looking at the diagram itself, we will be able to understand how many relations are there. I mean, how many tables are there? What are the attributes in the table? How relationships are formed among the entities? Which is a primary key attribute? Is there any weak relationship? Etc. And because of its simplicity and the very clear nature of depicting the things, it has a widespread usage in the database deployment areas. We are done with the basics of ER diagram. Let's step into the notations that are used in the ER diagram. When we talk about entities, the entity set is actually represented using rectangle. And if it is a single rectangle, it means it is a strong entity set. And when things are represented with double rectangle, then it is a weak entity set. Don't worry about this. What is a strong entity set and what is a weak entity set now? Anyway, I'm going to show you some examples shortly. That time I will explain you what is strong entity set and what is weak entity set with some examples. So this is about the entity set. And what about the relationship? When we have strong entity set and weak entity set, we also do have strong relationship and weak relationship. When relationship is expressed with a single diamond, it is strong relationship. If it is depicted with two diamonds or a double diamond, it is a weak relationship. Anyway, when we understand strong entity and weak entity, that time I will explain you what is strong relationship and what is weak relationship. Just recollect what are the basic components of ER diagram or ER model, the entity sets, the relationship, what is missing, attributes. And these attributes in ER diagram are represented like this. We have already seen about this in the previous presentation. Single oval, it is simple attribute or single valued attribute. And composite attribute is represented like this. Multi-valued attribute is represented with double oval and derived attribute is expressed with dotted oval. And remember, we also have null values in the attribute level. So these are the notations that are used in the ER diagram. In order to understand things clearly, let's see a few examples and things will be easy for you to understand. Let me show you a part of the ER diagram. Here it is. This instructor is an entity. Student is an entity. Instructor and student have advices relationship. So instructor advises student. And what are the attributes of instructor relation? The instructor ID, name and salary. What are the attributes of student entity? Student ID, name and credits earned. So this is how actually an ER diagram is represented. Now when you look into this, it is a simple rectangle and it is a simple diamond symbol. So it means this is a strong entity. And this is also a strong entity. And if we represent with double, I mean double rectangle or double diamond, then it is a weak entity or weak relationship. 
Let's see that shortly. There are some conventions that represent ER diagram like this. But in this lecture series, I am going to represent the same kind of ER diagram like this. Can you see here? I am going to represent entity and attributes like this. So the first half is the instructor, which is the name of the entity set like here. And the attributes are represented like this. ID, name and salary, which are the attributes ID, name and salary here. And the same advice is relationship here. And the equivalent for this entity student is represented like this. Student with the attributes ID, name and credits. Can you see here? ID, name and credits. And again, this is a strong relationship only because it is represented with single diamond. If it is double diamond, then it is a weak relationship. Now you may be wondering what is a strong relationship and what is a weak relationship. Let me explain that now. Let me take the same ER diagram and go to a new page in order to depict this. So let me focus on only this part. Now when you look into this, this is an ER diagram that has only two relations or two tables or two entities to be precise. Instructor entity and student entity. And what is the relationship? It is advises relationship. I mean, instructor advises student. I'm going to bring in something from the previous lecture. Can you recollect this? We have seen the basic structure and components where the relationship among the entities are depicted. If you are directly watching this lecture, I request you to watch my previous lecture. I mean part 2 of the ER model in order to understand things better. This is the entity set instructor and this is the entity set student and we have advices relationship. And the same is here. The instructor entity set, student entity set and advices relationship. Now what is additional here? The date attribute that gives more information about the relationship. When the relationship is formed. I mean on what date this instructor is assigned as the advisor for this particular student. Let me take John. John is appointed as the instructor for Jennifer on 3rd of May 2024. Now there is an attribute here and what attribute is this? It's a date attribute that gives more information about this relationship, isn't it? How this is represented in ER diagram? We are going to use dotted lines with the attribute date in order to tell the relationship attribute. What is this? Relationship and what attribute it is? Date attribute that tells or gives more information about the association when the instructor is assigned as the advisor to the student. So what is this diagram? This is the attribute attached to the relationship set. What is the relationship set? The advisor is the relationship set that has an attribute that is attached to this relationship set, isn't it? So we use dotted lines in order to represent this. Remember what is a dotted line? It is an attribute attached to a relationship set. What is this? It's a line. Line means it is used to connect the entity with the relationship set or the relationship set with the entity. So, two entities are associated with the help of relationship set and lines are used to connect the entity with the relationship set. So, remember two types of lines are here, the dotted line and the straight line. So, dotted lines are to connect the attribute with the relationship set. So, attribute attached to the relationship set is represented using dotted line and straight line is used to connect the entity or entity set with the relationship. Let's see another example and what we are going to see now. The strong entity set. If you see the relationship is with single diamond, so obviously this is a strong relationship. And at the same time, if you see here, this is also single rectangle only. So this is a strong entity set and this is also strong entity set. Now we need to understand what is a strong entity set. When an entity has a primary key attribute, then it is a strong entity set because this entity set is not depending on any other entity because it has a primary key attribute which helps in identifying the records uniquely. Similarly, coming to this entity set student, we also have a primary key attribute here. So the relationship that is formed between two strong entity set is going to be a strong relationship only. And that is why this relationship is a strong relationship. I hope now you are able to understand what is a strong entity set. The entities in the strong entity set are not dependent on other entity. Also, it will have a primary key attribute. Let's now see the weak entity set. Here is an example for weak entity set. Can you see here? It is represented using double diamond. 
So when it is represented with double diamond, it is a weak relationship. And also what are new things here? This is a strong entity set, but this is a weak entity set. The reason is there is no primary key attribute and the attributes are underlined with dashed lines. So from this, it's clear that there is no primary key attribute like this attribute in this course relation. However, in section, there is no primary key attribute. Since there is no primary key attribute, this is a weak entity set. So the relationship formed between a strong entity set and this weak entity set is a weak relationship. Also, we have double line. What does it mean? This is dealing with the participation. Whether it is a total participation or an optional participation or partial participation, don't worry about this now. We have an exclusive lecture that deals with participation. So for now, just understand, double lines deals with total participation. The entities present in the entity set must compulsorily participate in at least one entity in the relationship. Anyway, I will explain more about this later. Also, we have an arrowed line here. There are some conventions that uses arrowed line to represent the cardinality ratio or the cardinality number. But in this lecture series, we are going to represent something different because here the exact numbers cannot be specified. Anyway, in the coming presentation, you are going to understand about the mapping cardinalities in ER diagram. For now, just understand this is a weak relationship. This is the participation related and this is cardinality related. So this example is for a weak entity set because this entity set has no primary key attribute. Also, the attributes are dependent on a strong entity set in order to ensure its existence. When we see an example for ER diagram, we will be able to know things better. Since we are going to deal about the participation in the coming presentation, I'm going to ignore this for now. What about this? This is actually the cardinality ratio, isn't it? So here, instructor and student are having a relationship. Instructor advises student. And what is the cardinality ratio? This is represented with some numbers here. So no worries. This is the way to represent the cardinality limits. In the next presentation, I will tell you the numbers here and how it differs when we give numbers here and here. So this is how cardinality limits are represented in the ER diagram. Let's see the next example. Here is an example of an instructor entity. This instructor entity has ID, name, address, phone number, date of birth, age and salary as the attributes. I request you to pause this video for a while and compare this with the type of attribute that we have seen in the recent lecture. I hope you are done. From this, we can say this is a primary key attribute. This is a composite attribute, right? So name has first name, middle name and last name. What about the attribute address? This is a complex attribute because it has street and street has street number, street name and apartment number. And what are the other attributes in the street? It's city, state and zip, zip or postal code. So remember, this is a composite attribute under another composite attribute. And what about this phone number? We have seen this phone number is a multi-valued attribute. So multi-valued attributes are represented using this flower brackets. And what about date of birth? This is a single valued attribute. This is simply mentioned just like that. Single valued attribute or even simple attributes. What about this? Age. This age is a derived attribute. From which attribute this age can be derived? From this date of birth attribute. And that is why age is represented with parenthesis. Meaning it is a derived attribute. What about salary? This is a simple attribute because this is atomic in nature, which cannot be decomposed into further components or further values. So salary is a simple attribute, which is just like that represented. So what we understand from here is, this is how an entity is represented with different types of attribute. Now I want to show one more thing here, which is this. We have only one entity, which is course, which has course ID as the primary key attribute, which has other attributes like title and credits. And we also have a relationship and this relationship is a strong relationship only. And the relationship is prerequisite. Is it a binary relationship? No, a binary relationship is formed between two entity sets. But here we have only one entity. And we have this relationship achieved with the help of course ID and prerequisite ID. Then what kind of relationship is it? It is recursive relationship. 
I will elaborate about this recursive relationship in the AR diagram examples. But for now, I will just give you only few things. Let's say there are two courses here, course 1 and course 2. Let's say course 2 that requires course 1 as a prerequisite. Let's say if one student has to undergo course 2, then course 1 should have been completed. In that case, course 1 and course 2 are interlinked so that course 2 can be completed if and only if course 1 is completed. And that is why these kind of relationships are represented as recursive relationship. I am not articulating more about this because we are going to see that when we see some examples in the ER diagram. Now let me show you another example. Just tell me, is it an attribute or an entity? It is an entity, right? If it is an attribute, we have already seen in this presentation, it is connected with a dotted line so that this is a descriptive attribute. We have seen date as an example. But here this is project which is an entity set, not an attribute. Like instructor, like student. And these three are strong entities. And that is why we have a strong relationship. Now what this example is all about? This is an example for ternary relationship because this relationship is formed between three entities. Instructor, project and student. Remember the third entity is connected with the help of dotted lines because this exists only when these two exist. Remember, these dotted lines or dashed lines are used to link attributes of a relation to the relationship set or it is used in a ternary relationship. And that's it guys. What are the topics we have seen in this presentation? We have seen the entity relationship diagram which is the ER diagram with various notations that are used in the ER diagram. And also we have understood the basic structure and components of the ER model with the help of some examples in ER diagram. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.